Do you constantly feel like you have the best songs, but you can't quite get anybody to listen to them? You know there's people out there who would love it, but you just can't seem to find where they are on these interwebs. Well, once we get past that, you're probably one of those gaslighting, egomaniacal, narcissistic, toxic, neurodivergent, manipulator musicians who seem to only date people who post on cringe dating subreddits and make weird posts about you all day long. Anyway, if that's not what you're doing and you are indeed making great songs, there's probably an audience that wants to hear them and they just haven't heard you yet. And I have good news, because no matter what type of music you make today, even if it's some sort of tech klezmer dubstep, you're not alone and it's never been easier to find the people who may like your music than right now. Because whether it's short form apps or the way you target playlists, Technology has allowed us to find people who like the most obscure genres of music, even if there's only like 2,000 people in the world who would like it. And you could start to find them in like an hour or two, max. So let's teach you how. So a lot of people make the mistake of going way too broad in their music promotion. They think if they cast a wide net, they'll catch a lot of people. But the real fact of the matter is when you're dealing with large pools of people, most of the people are not the type of people who are looking for new music intentionally. Hence why even when you know what type of music you make, it can sometimes be hard to find the people who listen to it who are looking for their new favorite song. Since some people just put on a playlist or what their cool friend tells them is good and let that be their taste. They don't want to waste their time hearing bad songs and trust someone else to find them the tracks that they're going to rinse and they just want to be served the best music that's come out recently. And this is exactly why the radio at certain times in history was more popular than putting on intentional music choices like vinyl CDs or iTunes. Whereas other people, let's call them music addicts, need to search every crevice of the sidewalk, find an artist whose fan base can fit between the sidewalk cracks to fuel their addiction because they're kind of like a drug addict who dropped their drug between the sidewalk cracks. I know this person well because I am this music addict and as are most of the people I'm friends with, so I know how to find them. But I know a lot of you are going to a negative place, so let me rescue you real quick. You're thinking, great Jesse, before I watched this video, I had one problem, finding people who like my genre of music. But now I also need to find these dorks who want to hear new music too? I give up. Don't give up or else that cutie you see with the real cute quadruple septum piercing and with the chain between it and forehead tattoo that says run will never fall in love with you for your status as a cool niche musician and then ruin your life. I mean, uh, show you love. Yeah, that's it. We'll get your music heard and their attention. But really, I have good news. In the last year, it's the easiest ever been in the history of music to find these people who want to hear that new music that like your type of specific music and get them to hear it. So let's do it. So first off, we need to know some vague, vague genre traits of what type of genre music you make. But really, if you're like absolutely clueless about this, I'm gonna show you two easy tools that can figure that out. Both of them come from the company Submit Hub. And I know some of you are saying, Oh God, no, Jesse. I've messed with Submit Hub before. It costs money and it has cringe playlists. I'm not messing with that. Well, you who speaks too soon at YouTubers who can't hear you, I have a sad thing to tell you. They're both free tools. Great. So all you need to do is log into Submit Hub and sure, probably get pestered by them with some marketing emails that you could throw in your junk mail and then you could submit your song. So the first tool we're gonna have is called What's My Genre? Literally, what it's gonna do is you submit your song and it's gonna tell you by percentages, by analyzing the website Discogs, what genre of music you make. And if you don't know Discogs, it's a really big site for record nerds to trade records amongst each other instead of buying their partners nice gifts for the holidays. What? They spend all their money on vinyl. Anyway, Discogs is where the biggest music nerds congregate and assign genres to different records. So it's actually a pretty good algorithm curated by, let's be honest, the most genre obsessed dorks on earth who think about something that frankly is boring to just about 99.9% .9 of us. Since none of us want to discuss the difference between brutal technical death metal and technical brutal death metal. So if you put in a YouTube link to your song, it'll analyze the full song in case your song messes with different genres throughout it. If not, it'll use your Spotify link to analyze just the first few seconds of it. It'll tell you what genre it thinks it is. And the really good news is if you're the type of artist who makes different songs with different genres, well, you could do this each time and get a pretty damn good answer to start with. So after that, we probably have three genres that are a pretty good starting place for your song. Sometimes just two though. Either way, this will be good enough to start. Then you're gonna post your song on Submit Hubs, Hot or Not. This is a place where these nerds, I mean, early adopters, come to listen to music and tell you if your track is, well, hot or not. 
but you can also look for advice on what genre your song is. The other thing is, even if you solicit nothing, a lot of these dorks are gonna tell you what other groups that you sound like. And while that sounds annoying, it's actually kind of good because a lot of times, you're probably gonna get answers about groups that you will probably, one, really enjoy and be inspired by, and two, that you could put on your playlist that will help target your music. But more on that later. And yeah, it can take a few days to cook on Hot or Not, so we'll come back to that since we already have enough to get started promoting your music. So if you're doing all that, you probably wanna be writing it down. You've been writing this down, right? And where I'd suggest you write it down is linked below, which is my community spreadsheet, which if you've never watched my video on how to find community, it's my most important video, and you should really watch it after this. It's linked in the description, along with this spreadsheet to write this stuff down. Okay, let's just do a little bit more. Next, you're gonna go over to the site Music Stacks, and you're gonna look up some of the artists that you think you sound similar to. And each time you look at them, you can see what Spotify considers them by looking right here that's on the screen right now. These genres can also help help you for what we're about to do. So now that you have all that, if you're ready to start promoting your song, I'm gonna tell you how all this works. So let's say you go to post a TikTok reel or a YouTube short. You're gonna do a thing that even the biggest artists do, like Tommy Richmond, who had the number two song in the world this summer with Million Dollar Baby. And this is one of the things he did to promote his song to get that high on the charts, is he said, I know what genre is this? Well, as you'll notice, that got a lot of people talking. But what you probably don't realize is what that's doing, is that when someone comments on TikTok about something, they're very likely to see one of your next videos. So if they see that next video and it has your song in it, now they've just heard it twice. And then we will hopefully get them to hear it again when you promote it and keep posting more videos. And sure enough, if they've heard of that song a bit, the more susceptible they are to that song being one that they wanna go and listen to on one of the streaming platforms like Spotify or YouTube. But next you're gonna take some of those genre suggestions that people gave you in the comments and you're gonna make a follow-up video like this one from Stresshead. I like to use this as one of the examples Examples because he actually got me hooked on his song by doing this. And I feel like I should reward them because I like this song a lot. They would post here, we're trying to figure out what genre this song is. And each side would be them saying their thoughts on what the suggestions were about the genre and commenting on what they thought. This creates more controversy for these nerds who are the early music adopters who are gonna tell everyone else what to listen to. And TikTok sees the keywords in here and people who have engaged with those words before or typed them before, it sends people these videos. So now if your video is getting engaged, the biggest music nerds are gonna be brought in to fight over it. You know, those same people who are likely to early adopt your music. So you could do eight, six sides of this saying, what genre is this? You can even turn it into a video too, where you just keep doing scenarios where you guess it, and it doesn't need to be a slideshow. You could do both because one of the things I keep telling you all is you don't repeat yourself enough on the short form apps. And the artists who are blowing up the most that I see in my member dissections where remember, for $5 a month, you can see me dissect the artists who are blowing up their music and how they're doing that. And I dissect all sorts of genres and you get around six to seven hours of content every single month. And I do a different dissection every single week to get you up to speed of how people finally get their music heard and break their music. So what are you waiting for to click that link in the description? Anyway, what I see in those dissections is all the artists that are blowing up probably repeat themselves more than you do. It really is shocking how much they make similar videos and just keep getting better and better at them. Whereas you're all scared to make the same video even remotely twice. So anyway, you do this for the first week or so of promoting your song. And you can do some alternate ones too, like posting this till I find people who f with math boom bip old school hip hop. Or you can do the um classic, yeah, that's it. Trying to find the incel hypey slumlord influencer and dog piss fans to listen to my new song, Bit Check at the Holocaust Museum. And let's not forget the true classic one that gets fingers tapping in the comments. Stop scrolling if you F with incel hypey, slumlord influencer, or other incel sleaze sounds. And there's other creative ways to do this. If you know you're very generic, let's say you're like Artemis, who's just really a horny version of The Weeknd and a little, well, whiter, you can literally make posts if you're trying to target The Weeknd's audience to say, yo, am I more horned up than The Weeknd? But once you've made those videos about genre, you should be making videos that try to engage people and get them to listen to your song and recontextualize it and make the normal videos you make around a song. But you've also probably been told what's a good hashtag for your music by the people who commented on that. You should also do a hashtag search on the TikTok app and look in that app 
and see the other artists who make music around that, follow and engage with them, and make sure that this is a good genre fit and that you're not hashtagging something that you don't fit in it at all. But each time you release a song, you could kind of launch it just like this. But I'm gonna bring you to another tool now. There's every noise at once, which I know is shut down a little bit, but it still has some active features that are really cool. So one of the things I like to do is make playlists of small artists on Spotify because you can get algorithmic ties to them if people start listening to it. And one of the quickest ways to do this is if you search for an artist who's similar to you and then click on their genre under the search, then there's often these tabs that say Edge, Pulse, and New. And all three of these playlists have lots of artists that you can just hit play on and start to find ones that you could put on the, your artist playlist. As these are algorithmically built of the newest songs that are getting some traction in that genre that have been tagged. So you can do all sorts of things with this. You could make a TikTok outside influence account like I described in one of my previous videos and do the five best scrams tracks of fall 24 and put a few of them in it with your song. And while I'm not the biggest meta ads fan, I recently made a video with the artist Jen who would promote the playlist they made of similar artists to them that are smaller and it got him millions of monthly listeners and that's linked in the description too. The fact is, these short form videos are what's working in the algorithm right now. It's finding tons of artists, their first fans, or blowing up artists that already had some fans. But if you really wanna figure out how you keep posting more videos after this so your fans stay engaged, I highly recommend you watch the video that's on the screen right now as it's my guide to the TikToks that will blow up your song. Thanks for watching.